this week on a brand new SAS podcast. They are going to be putting an emphasis on traveling, bro. That's and for James I'm Harden, a tad right? bit worried. What you say? That's for James Harden, right? No, well, no, that's for the traveling guy from Greece, first of all. It's Mr. Four Step <laughs> Euro himself. We supposed to be the losers, but we win it, no. They used to laugh at us, no, we win it, no. They used to tell me never in my lifetime. I guess they wasn't in their right mind. I gotta make sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, we back. What's going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. The realest sports talk pie in all the land. True. The pairs, when you real shit happens, sometimes your audio be jacked up. That's how you I mean, know yeah. we real. That's yeah. how you know we real. We the realest in all the land, bro. True. Hey, we give them the raw and uncut, baby. Sometimes you got to do it to them, man. We are back to wrap up the previous week of sports in dramatic fashion, man. If you're new to our show, let me tell you what you can expect here, right? Two mm-hmm. brothers talking that talk. We don't come at you with this corporate agenda man we just we just hanging out talking sports we give it to you real with no bs no biasness none of that other who i'm finna say a bad word none of that other say fs it. none of that other fuck shit we don't give you that we just give you sports talking the real way man if this is your right. first time watching our show here on youtube or if you're listening on any of our various podcast channels i'm one half of the show i go by the name of k spade the prospect and i'm your boy the Pappas 57 and together we form strong arm sports spade. Yes, sir. That's what we do. We form that. Bruh. Man, <clears throat> another amazing week of sports, man. I mean, just well, not that thir- not that Thursday night game. That Thursday night game was kind of trash, but I mean, I mean, it's Thursday night. You know what I mean? Get some football on Thursday night, but it was kind of trash. We'll talk about it later. But spade, Thanks. crazy. Something happened in the NBA. I know games are right around the corner. Preseason is right around the corner. It's hey, I'm talking to the homies. And I said, yo, hockey back already. They're like preseason. And I'm like, I know it's preseason, but it's back already. They're like, yo, hockey played 82 games. I said, hockey played 82? Spade, did you know hockey played 82 games? Hell no. (laughs) I said, damn, they taking that type of punishment for 82 games? I thought hockey was around 40, 50 games. That just goes to show, you know, I don't watch that shit. But, damn, 82 games of that type of punishment, that's insane. But, anyway, hockey back, and NBA preseason is right around the corner, so I want you guys to be patient, because guess what? Next week, we're bringing back the top fives of the NBA rosters. So, y'all, mm. listen, don't leave your top fives in the comment section. Mm. We don't know. Spade, I kill that. Let me ask you a question, Spade, before we get into the first topic. Is center got? even still a position? I mean, we know we got Big Joke in. We know we got Embiid. But other than that, I mean, we know AD do not want to play center. Is center still a position in the league? I mean, it is, but they sure as hell trying to kill it. You can go ask Jaleel Okafor. He still, I mean, we gonna have, Jaleel we Okafor gonna have and Dwight Howard want to be center so right. bad. They want I mean, to be center so bad. They do. I mean, the big, we might have to put Big Nurk it up there. Shit, we might have to put Dwight up there. Because, I mean, I don't know if it's in. I don't even know if it's. Sinners, we that many sinners, so we'll talk about that another day. I don't know what position we're going to start with. I, I'm pretty, I'm, I know for a fact, probably shooting guard and point guard going to be the last two. Probably, probably, but we're going to have some fun with that. That starts next week. Spade, I'm going to start in the NBA if you guys didn't know. Yeah, the NBA made a decision. They said, Yo, we're tired of this tampering shit, so they made mm-hmm. stronger, stiffer tampering rules, and if they are broken. People won't get fined, yo. It's going down. So it said the NBA Board of Governors voted unanimous, unanimously. Yeah, sometimes I'll be jacking that word up. Sometimes I'll be jacking it up. Unanimously to boost financial pen- penalties for legally contacting and or negotiating with free agents. Babe. Yeah. Talk to me about this rule. Talk to me about do you think this is going to stop uh, tampering? Babe, we talked in the pre-show. Yep. We got some. We got something fun for y'all too with, with the pre-show. But we talked in the pre-show and Spade. I told you, I'm like, I don't know if this going to stop that. And you said, put, no matter of fact, Spade, tell me what you think about the these rules. Tell the people what you told me during the pre-show. Well, all right. So basically, this is trying to fix a few things, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's trying to fix where teams kind of. 
indirectly reach out to players and tell players that they got interest in them, whether this is by praising them in interviews or, you know, whatever. They're trying to stop that. But I think the biggest thing they're trying to stop is the communication with teams and players before the deadline. And, you know, this is something that happens so much that it's common knowledge. You will have Woj on Twitter like, that's a fact. Clippers and so-and-so agree to a deal, blah, 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 blah. They can't sign it into this date, but they already the deal already worked out. Well, technically, you ain't supposed to be able to work those deals out that early. And they want to stop that shit. Also, man, some audio, uh, uh, you know, somebody came out with an interview with Kawhi Leonard about exactly, well, actually, I think it was with Doc Rivers, about exactly how that whole thing went down and like it's tampering it's straight up tampering like you know i don't know if you guys have seen it i should try to find it and at least tell you guys where you can look for it lapares did you see the interview i seen it so i mean they was just saying that Kawhi was like i want to come here but this team isn't good enough and if you guys can get me but here's what it's gonna take so to speak and and it was on them if they made those moves they got them if they didn't they didn't get them and technically by the letter of the law that right there is not legal Okay, and, and what they talking about? They doing did include Paul George. That was one of the moves, right? Absolutely. Like, like <laughs> Absolutely. I come in, but y'all better get Paul George, or I'm Absolutely. not coming. That was one of the things. So they want to make these rules more strict, right? They're talking about mm-hmm. increasing the maximum fine in ten million. They were finding, mm-hmm. they were finding billionaires. Mm-hmm. You know. $500,000 fine, $750,000 fine, See, that million shit dollar like fine. That's like 1%. That's like 1%. That ain't that ain't shit even, to a billion. That ain't even 1% because I think, I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, bro, but I think 10 million is one, 10, like uh, 10% of 1 billion is 100 million. So that's like, that's not even 1% because these dudes got 2, 3, 4, 5 billion. So yeah. shit, that ain't even 1%. That's like point, that's like 0.5%. Come on, man. That's not, that's nothing. Yeah, man. Uh, but they're talking about also they, they want to be able to mess with contracts. If, if teams have acquired players illegally, they can, like, undo contracts. They have even talked about being able to take draft picks. And this is the only way you're going to change this culture, man, because, like you said, you know, if I got $300 in my pocket and you tell me I owe you three, I honestly don't give two shits about that $3. Like, I just don't care about it. And it's not... It's not enough of a slap on the wrist for me to not try to put my team in a better competitive spot. I'll pay that fine to get my team where I want my you team. You ain't lying. You ain't now, lying. Paris, I tell you, there was a specific quote, and I don't think we got a name on it. Ramona Shelbourne uh, reported this. Well, she didn't report it, but I think Rachel Nichols reported it, and Ramona Shelbourne said this is what's, this is the problem right here. Said one not named Team GM said, I am going to abide by the rules until I find out that other people aren't abiding by the rules and it's putting us at a competitive disadvantage. That's what's going to happen. As soon as word get out that so-and-so did this and that, man, they finna play ball, fam. They gonna play ball for the money. And LaParis, yeah. you had a very interesting question that I'm sure you want to propose to the people about yep. what you don't think this is going to fix. Spade, I, I said in the pre-show, I... Look, I can, I get it. They don't want teams like in the Paul George situation. They don't want. I would assume. I'm assuming. I don't know. I'm assuming somebody got in contact with Paul George from the Clippers or maybe Kawhi. But I but I think the Clippers more so because I think Kawhi said, "Look, I'm coming if y'all get Paul George." So I'm thinking somebody from the Clippers, probably Doc, hit up uh Paul George and was like, "Yo, Kawhi said here come to the Clippers." If if we can trade for you and we are willing to trade, you need to go make a demand. Go make some demands make to your ass. owner, your GM. Like you need to go be like, I want to be traded and only to the Clippers. That's what I think happened. That's what I'm assuming happened. So they can probably stop that and no. But if Kawhi and Paul George was just chilling in the club or they just happened to be somewhere else, and pa- Kawhi said to Paul George like, "Yo, I'll, I'll go to the Clippers." If you come with me, go demand a trade. How they gonna stop that? Cause they ain't unless somebody running their mouth. I don't understand how they know what the play what the player is talking about, especially in this space, this NBA. And I don't want to say they hated each other back then, but they wanted you know they kind of 
they didn't like each other that much. Like, Mike, we know Michael right. Jordan and Charles Barkley was cool, but they had a falling out. But it was they didn't like each other like that. These these players are friendly and buddy buddy. They like each other. After the game, they're going. They league, bro. Yeah, bro. Right after the game, they're going right out to eat. They together, and they're on opposing teams. So I don't understand how they, if they up in the club somewhere and they chopping it up over some drinks. So we done seen players chopping it up over cigars. If they doing that, and they, and it just happened to go into yo. I'm just saying, yo, you might need to come on. Now nah, I'm just throwing this team out there. You might need to come to the Knicks. We building something over here. I'm, I, I'll go to the Knicks if you go to the Knicks. How they gonna stop that? How they gonna know what we even talked about? So I don't, I don't see a way that they can prove that, especially prove it and be like, yo, this happened. We're taking your drive picks. We're finding you ten million dollars. I don't see how they can prove that, and maybe they can, unless somebody. But I think if them nobody running, if Spade, if I was at Fox Sports and you was at ESPN, and I'm saying, yo, man, you had this show strong on sports together. I'm over here. We building something over here. I want to go over there. I want to do a show with you. And you come over there, how the hell are they going to know that? Man, you talk every day. They ain't going to know what we talked about. You're right. You're absolutely I, I right. Just, I, I, don't, I don't see a way they can stop that. And and w- what's to stop the team from being like, you know what? We'll get fined if we do. Now, we know Mike Magic Johnson was geeking. He was like, hell yeah, every team in the NBA should want KD. But you just can't say that. You a GM. And that's probably that right. was part of the reason, in my opinion, Magic was like, yo, I'm out. I can't say nothing. Right. I can't say nothing. Right. But I... What's to stop the team from being like, yo, sad star player, uh, you might need to go holler at other star player and then let us know what, what the wave is and see if we can bust a move. So I, I, I don't see how they can stop that, Spade. And maybe I'm I wrong. either. Now, I agree with you. I don't know if you remember when they had the NBA season awards that was like three weeks ago. That's sarcasm because the damn yeah. league ended a long ass time ago. Right. But they they did the award and people were saying like oh Larry Bird like you know Magic was kind of like yeah we were great and Larry was paying homage to the players of today and like Larry got such a big heart and I was like ah, I think y'all might want to hold off about Larry Bird being so complimentary of of Clay Thompson and all these players that let's not act like Larry ain't connected to a team that could benefit from having some of these damn players on his team right. I, and unfortunately that's the way the league got to look at it but the parents I'm gonna tell you what's weird about it. Sports, I mean, I get it. It's different. Before somebody state the obvious and tell me, with Spade, that's that's like apples to oranges. I get it. But this behavior happened in every other profession, at least in America. I can't speak for overseas because I've never worked overseas. But over here, it works that way with everything. So, Paris, if you work at a top, you and I, we both was fans of suits, right? Mm. If you work at a top law firm, and I know you. Maybe we went to college together, or maybe I just follow your track record. I know you kick ass and take names. I work at a top law firm. You best believe if somebody at my job is is on the hot seat or shit ain't going good, I'm going to be hitting you up like, yo, I can recommend your name to my folks. You think you can get a buyout here? We can get you there. Can you bring the clients? You got some big name clients. Can you bring them clients over there? They do this shit every day. They do this shit every day. I would definitely go to my name partner and be like, look, I know we got a position to fill. I got a partner that work at so-and-so and so-and-so. He's a top-notch attorney. If he comes over, he's going to bring this company. And they, they do this shit all the time. So They do. I feel like you so, can't so, stop it. So but you, Adam Silver so, said everybody so you want, in them. You want the floodgates open? Is that what you're saying? Nah, you can't have the floodgates open. And like I said, it's apples to oranges. It is two different things. The, the only thing about this that I like, Adam Silver said, we had a healthy conversation, and everybody seemed to everybody seemed to agree that we need to take steps to make it a level playing field. And I think all these GMs, I think they're cool doing it the right way. I actually do. But I'm not going to be a GM and play by the rules and put my team at a disadvantage when I look over here and you're not playing by the rules and you not playing by the rules is helping you build a better team than me. So I think everybody, it's kind of like, I hate, you know me, man. I miss that analogy guy. If we're doing a shopping spree thing, I got a cart, you got a cart, we both got three minutes to run through the store, I'm cool waiting until you say go. But if your ass is going before he say go, I'm going before he say go. I'm not sitting here to go. And I think that's what everybody's saying. Everybody's like, I'm cool waiting to go. Just make sure don't nobody else ask go before me. And I think that's where everybody is at it. And I don't know that Adam Silver 
thought an NBA can keep this shit under wraps. I don't know if they can. I, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. And it's crazy, Spade, because I feel like it's easy for... Uh, I feel like it's easy for everybody to vote unanimously right now because, I mean, the, the Lakers got who they want. The Clippers done got who they want. Yeah, hell yeah, vote. Yeah, yeah, we don't care now. We done got who we want. We done got them. But the Knicks so, did. Yeah. The everybody Knicks vote didn't unanimously. Get shit. Yeah. So, I mean, I just feel like it's better. I just, I just feel like it's easy for everybody to just vote unanimously. Yeah, we agree. This shit need to be tightened up. But everybody done got who they want now. Everybody that mattered, they got who they want. Wow, so the Knicks don't matter? The Knicks struck out on everybody. They damn want it. I mean, I, I mean, I ain't trying to throw... I mean, let's be honest, man. Let's be honest. I mean, we, Spade, we, I talked to you about Kevin Durant and Kyrie in the pre-show. Bruh, we seen them chopping it up since the All-Star break. Probably before that. And everybody was speculating and they were coming out. Nah, that's not the case. When everybody... Bruh, soon as that shit was happening, they was like, yo, it's reports that they are going... To the Knicks or the Nets or somewhere together, and that shit happened. So how? But it was no. I mean, we knew it, but it was no proof. What we think they talking about? But I'm saying it's no proof. That's why I think that player to player interaction, they're not gonna be able to stop that shit. They're not gonna be able to stop that shit. And the perfect example is KD and, and Kyrie. They they. Is that's the perfect example? Every, they've been chopping it up all year, all year. They were chopping it up. So, I don't know how you can stop it. it. It sucks because it's really screwing, like, I, I was reading and it was saying that it really, like, screws over the small market teams because they just picking guys from the small, like, the elite players that's there, they just picking them from the small market team and small, they saying that the small market teams don't stand a chance. But then they are also pointing at a team like Milwaukee. They're saying, oh, Milwaukee got a superstar in Giannis. And they thinking Giannis... Man, I mean, Spade, we've seen dudes stay loyal. KG stayed loyal to Minnesota for a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. Eventually. Maybe to a that, fault. Yeah, yeah. eventually that shit wears thin, and you be like, yo, I got to get the hell out of here. I got to yep. get the hell out of here. This shit ain't working. So, I mean, we're going to have to see how this shit play out. I don't think they can stop that player-to-player -player interaction. They can probably police owner, GM to player way better than they can stop that player-to-player -player interaction. So, I, I, it's a few more things, but before what? we move on, uh, I actually found the article I was talking about. Doc Rivers had a interview, and he said that he had Kawhi Leonard at his house. Mm. And this is how the team approached Kawhi Leonard. He said, <laughs> and he told the LA Times this. said that they knew that OKC wanted to break their team up, and they provided Kawhi Leonard with a list of players. And... <laughs> Uh, Doc Rivers said that was a mistake because we shouldn't have had a list because then he got to choose exactly who he wanted to play with. And the assumption was that we could get him. And we didn't even know for sure that we could get either of these guys. But we, we showed him a list of available free agents, uh, uh, people who we felt like was going to be a free agent or people mm -hmm. we could get. Let me take that back. Not even available free agents. We showed him a list of players that we felt like the team would move on. And, and we said, who, who do you want? And he looked at Paul George's name and said, I want him. And he said, we went, we went to other folks and we showed them other names. Like, what about this guy? What about this guy? But after they showed him Paul George, he was out on everybody else. He was like, I like this guy. Now, the funny thing is, said that Kawhi told Steve Ballmer that he liked Steve Ballmer. He, he liked some of the things he do. But told him, your team flat out isn't good enough. And if you can't boost the roster, I'm not coming. Simple as that. So that goes back to what we were saying. But the pairs... This this one topic here is just about big changes from the NBA and that, you know, stricter rules on tampering. That's only one thing. It was two other things that the league also slapped the gavel down on that we need to talk about today. One is the league says this year they are going to be putting an emphasis on traveling, bro. That's and for James I'm Harden, I'm a tad right? bit worried. What you say? That's for James Harden, right? No, well, no, that's for the traveling guy from Greece, first of all. It's Mr. Four-Step Euro <laughs> himself. That's who they need to keep an eye on. Don't ever come for my boy James like that ever again, bro. Bro, I'm just, bro right? you are the NBA guy. I'm asking the that's question. Right. Who are they implementing this rule for? Yeah, it's the guy I, from first Greece. First person came to my mind was James Harden. Well, then, well your mind must be wired backwards because he the furthest <laughs> one you need to be worried about. You go to the other end of the spectrum, you see Giannis Euro stepping four or five steps through the paint. Check this okay. out, though. I'm a little bit concerned because you are the NFL guy. 
And yeah. it wasn't many years back that the league decided to tackle an issue. And that issue was catch. What is a catch? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in them tackling that issue, they only blurred the lines even more. It's even yeah, we tougher. We still don't know what a catch is. We still don't know. So look, man, <laughs> the league says they want to provide a formal definition of a player gathering his dribble, something that has been part of how referees determine traveling for calls for quite some time now, and it's mm -hmm. never been spelled out in the rules. Okay. One of the most misunderstood rules in our game. This is a direct quote, by the way. One of the most misunderstood rules in our game is how traveling is interpreted and appropriately called. Revising the language of certain areas of the rule is part of our three-pronged approach to address the uncertainty around traveling. This shit is going to be problematic. I, be I think it's problem. necessary. I agree 100%. It's going to be a problem. I think it's necessary, problem. but it's going to be problematic. I'm going to be honest with y'all. People have been traveling since Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was taking three steps on the way to tongue wagon dunks. Well, don't, Trust ever, me. don't ever come for the GOAT, bro. Okay? <laughs> bro. Huh. MJ the GOAT. But MJ would throw a third. He would only throw a third in there, though. Bro, you Y'all seen James Harden move with that behind the back shit? That shit and is that's a why he. That's why he jumping off one foot. Because that's still part of his gather. Don't, what I tell you? All right? You want to finish saying. the show? Because we can end it. We can, I, I, I can be through. I'm just saying. Yeah. Shit, we 25 minutes in. This is, this is a good show to me. I'm just, I'm <laughs> just saying, James Harden got a new move that look like a travel. It's not a travel, it's, bro. Uh, why, bro you, why are you saying that? All I'm saying is the line is blurred, Spade. It's you don't blurry. even know what a catch is. What's a catch? It's, you right. And that line is blurry. And I wear glasses. I still can't see it. Thick ass glasses, too. Because I saw you from the side one day. Them <laughs> Word. Shit like, like the hill on a you, church shoe. It's weird, bro. I don't know what a catch is. I don't know what a travel is. Spade, I don't even know what a charge is anymore. Like, what's a charge? They they just I tell you what. Like, that's why that that's why that whole little meme came out. Block a charge. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And it's one other rule that the NBA passed down. And man, I remember once upon a time this would have been good news to you, LaPaz, but you don't what's you that? don't really you don't really fool around no more. Announcing lineups. Now teams must make their uh, official rosters yes. 30 minutes yes. before tip-off. Yes. As opposed to the 10 that it used to be. That's teams still used to have they used to have up until 10 minutes before tip-off to announce who the hell was gonna start and who was gonna play. That makes it extremely difficult to gamble on. Especially the when NBA AD wants you to right gamble. Before, right before the tip, AD would be out with a sprained vagina. Like that is a fact. 10 minutes till, like, come on. So, yeah, man, the NBA has been working in this offseason, and although I think some of these things, two of these things ain't really going to work. The traveling thing going to be problematic. The tampering ain't never going to go anywhere. But I can at least say the league, I feel like all three of these things are a measure to make things better. That third thing ain't got I shit agree. to do with the league, though. That's gambling. <laughs> they just try to have the gambling shit out. That's a fact. But, uh, yeah, man, the league been busy, bro. I mean, That's my league. Listen. That's how my league get it done. I'm not saying I disagree with any of the rules. I'm just saying that shit is going to be hard. It's, the traveling, it's going to be a problem. The uh, the tempering shit is going to be hard to prove. And if you're talking about, you better have concrete evidence if you're talking about taking somebody's draft pick away. Shit, you only get two in the NBA. First and the yeah, second. Take them so shit. if you're talking about taking somebody's shit, you better have concrete proof. And I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. I don't know. I wish your league would take a stand. Oh Do gosh, something about bro. the Patriots recording our damn practices. You know bro, what I'm saying? Shit, bro. Hey, Spade. Do something about the Giants Speaking kicker of, beating his Spade. old lady ass and one still of these banging 35-yard field goals. One of these upcoming weeks, we're going to have to we're gonna have to get in depth about the, about the New England Patriots. We, they might be the most controversial team ever. Or, like, they got a lot of shit surrounding that team. I mean... They still, they still win a lot of Super Bowls and all that. But, I mean, shit, spy Even game, some of those ain't controversial. Game. Yeah. I mean, uh, they own her. I mean, players that they sign. Like, we're going to have to really get in depth about them and talk about them one day. And, and through all that, they are still one of the most successful, if not the most successful franchise ever in sports. So, we're going to have to talk about that one. I don't know how, that, how you're going to feel about that, being a Dolphin fan. But, one of these days, I mean, we're going to have to talk no about that. kind of way. We kick their ass once a year. And shout out my boy Law RK. I don't rock with Robert Kraft, but his alter ego, Law RK, the one in the ice side chain at the massage parlor, that's my guy. That's my guy. 
Uh, okay. Fam, let's move forward. If you, let's get if it. you good with that. Yeah, All right, let's get it. get it, man. Let's talk about your favorite player in the NFL. It's not really. Who's he? No, I'm talking uh-huh. about Antonio. Antonio Brown, your guy. Hey, man. Antonio, let me tell you something, bro. I hope you're listening to the podcast. Let me talk to you, Antonio. This ain't the Antonio Brown show. It's the third damn week in a row that you done had a power segment on this show, and I want you to cut the shit out for at least a couple of weeks. I don't want you back on the. I don't want you back on the slate next week. But Antonio Brown is back in the news for the third week in a row, and this time it is about his release. One week we talked about the release from the Raiders. The next week we talked about the acquisition by the New England Patriots, and then we're back to say the Patriots are April Fool, and they're washing their hands of the Antonio Brown situation amid multiple, now multiple, allegations of sexual assault or, or whatever he got going on. And, as we said last week, we ain't really, we ain't even talking the sexual assault shit. I don't even like to speak on that stuff until all the facts are in, and and you know, I, I don't obviously. I mean, I don't feel like we even gotta say it. Obviously, if anybody sexually assaulted, if he's found guilty, I, we ain't even gotta speak on where we stand on that. I sure. mean, we got mothers and sisters. I got a daughter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even gotta speak on that. You know where we yeah. stand on that. We want to talk about the football side of it. Antonio Brown was technically a member of the New England Patriots for 11 days. And if I'm not mistaken, LaParis, I think he signed a $5 million bonus, if I'm not mistaken. And he he played one game. $5 million for one game. He was productive in that game. They was forcing it to him like hell. They were. But he was productive in that game against the Dolphins, who was trying to lose. And right now, it appears as though he's out. First question to you. Do you see anybody else coming calling? Is anybody else going to hit up Drew Rosenhaus to try to sign Antonio Brown this season? Spade, I don't even want to talk about AB. He was cut. Got to, bro. We got a job to do. He was cut, and so be it. Will somebody take this? I, I seen, again, I seen team saying, that, I seen people, not team, I'm sorry. I seen people saying Cowboys. I seen people saying Eagles. Eagles banged up at receiver right now. DJ look like he's out. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey look like he's going to be out. Aguilar was might be in concussion protocol. Look like the tight end, the backup tight end. Uh, I forgot his name. Dallas Dallas Goddard or Goddard, whatever his name is, look like he's going to be out. I don't know. So a lot of people saying Eagles, Spade. I, I don't know if anybody going to pick him up. He's a talented guy, but Spade, I sent you a tweet that Antonio Brown. Tweeted like after the, after I think he was cut Friday. He was like, "Damn, I got fired on a Friday." Like he think this like like you know mentioning the Friday shit when Craig lost his job on like this shit. He think this shit is a game. Like it's funny. He he think it's a game and it's funny. And I'm just like, yo, Spade is crazy because we said we didn't think he would get signed and he, he got signed by New England. Mm-hmm. And we said. We don't think this shit going to work. We don't know if he going to last the whole season. He ain't even last a damn week. Like, he ain't last two weeks. He, he played one game, and they got they got him out of there. It's the NFL. Somebody will probably take another shot on him, but I don't think it'll last because I don't think he care anymore. I don't think he cares. So, will somebody take a shot? My money, If I had to put money on it, I'd go 51% to 49 somebody take a shot. Like, okay, but it, he got to get he got to get his off the field shit together, bro. Before yeah. anybody do anything, that shit got to get taken care of. Yep. Seriously, that's what I was gonna say. I, I think regardless of his talent, you already got the other off the field issues as far as yeah, the man. way the Pittsburgh Steelers thing went down and the, the way the Oakland Raider thing went down. And on top of that, if you a team, you don't know how this whole thing is gonna pan out and. Teams care as much about their public image. It, it just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say because I was so sure that this was a man that no longer had the love for the game and wanted to be out. And then he tried to prove that he was Kaiser Soze. He pulled the mask off. He started walking straight. And he was, look, his departure from New England has been night and day from his departure from Oakland. Mm-hmm. He recorded a video of him saying free at last, basically, when he got cut from Oakland. Wow. And... He was on Twitter thanking the New England Patriots for the opportunity. Then yeah, again, posting pictures I made $5 million. Face to face. Yeah, man. It's some weird shit here. 
Uh, I don't know what's going on with the Antonio Brown shit, man. I, I'm kind of, I don't want this to turn into a TMZ of Antonio Brown. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I don't want to, at least give me a week off, Antonio. How about don't do shit next week so we can at least take a break. One week break from talking about you. Well, I don't know if that shit going to happen because this fuck, excuse me, this case is still pending. Like, so, and I mean, it ain't even the criminal, I, don't, I know we don't want to talk about it. It ain't even the criminal, criminal case. It's a civil suit. And the crazy thing is, like, he he text messages or emails and all this shit. Just, you got to get that crap together. And, like I said, it's the NFL. Nothing surprised me with the NFL, man. We don't know if he's going to be suspended. You know, if you disrespect the shit, Roger Goodell got the, he got the power to veto anything and be like, yo, you out of here. Like, you, you getting suspended. So, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if a team going to take another shot. He a talented dude, and I can see a team being like, yo. We'll take, we'll take a flyer, and if he gets suspended, so be it. I mean, you definitely getting them cheap as hell now. Gonna probably get him for like $2 million, if that. So, I can see a team taking a flyer, but he gotta get that off the field shit together. That shit sure. gotta be first. For sure. I agree. Ready to move on? Because I'm tired yes, of Antonio Brown, man. Me too, bro, but this your boy. He's your favorite player. Nah, nah, he gotta go, man. Listen, man. Speaking of Antonio Brown, we're gonna talk about his old, his old, old quarterback, his ex, ex quarterback, and we, you know, it's, it's a couple things happening in Pittsburgh. Big Ben, who's been looking pretty, young. he ain't been looking too good, and come to find out, the, 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 the game he played last week, he started grabbing his elbow, and come to find out, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's Tommy John surgery he has to have, and he is out for the season. And insert Mason Rudolph is Rudolph season. And not only that, we already know the, uh, how this grunts with everybody is in Miami, by the way. Like, everybody is pissed off down there. And Mika, we, we, fine. we talked about Mika we fine, bro. he traded. And Mika was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a first-round pick. Spade, big bit out for the season. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about Minka, Fitzpatrick being traded there. And talk to me about, you know, what the Dolphins got in return. All right. Uh, let's start with Big Ben. Big Ben being hurt for the season is concerning to me. And LaParis, I know you remember this. It wasn't long ago. Last season, Big Ben numbers was was great, man. You had Juju who had a, a great season. AB had a pretty uh, had a great season as well. I think both of those guys was over a thousand yards. Uh, Connor stepped in and, and and filled in for Le'Veon Bell nicely. The Steelers didn't have the win-loss success when you look at the way their season ended that they wanted to have. But statistically, Big Ben was pretty damn good. And mm-hmm. oddly enough, last season was the first season in like the last three that Big Ben didn't talk about retirement after the season. Mm-hmm. Both of the previous seasons, Big Ben was saying, ah, he, he made it sound like he was mulling over retirement. And we said here on this show, once a player starts even considering retirement, they kind of right. out. They kind of out. You know what I'm saying? Like, when when you in it, you you that retirement, that shit, you really can't even see it. You can't even see it. So I know he just had a really good season and he was removed from it. He didn't mention anything about retirement. But I also know that the two previous years before that, he was mentioning retirement. And it makes me wonder what I would I what, what's the saying? I'm finna jack it up. I, I I don't mind fuck it, I don't damn know. <laughs> Rhyme time. I don't mind dime. I don't damn know. But he got a whole lot of time to think is basically what I'm trying to say. And mm-hmm. Sitting there, being older, I, I'm a guess that Big Ben's about 35. I don't know how old he is, but 35 is old at the, at the quarterback position. He, he's been hit a lot, and he's now having this injury that I just I don't know if Big Ben comes back. I don't know mentally where he's going to be at the end of all this. Now, he's saying all the right shit right now. He had a post where he was like, he can't wait to get back out there. Shit, Big Ben 37, bro. I mean, cut you off. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So, I don't really know about that. Now, let's talk this trade for Minka. The parents, this thing right here, I, I don't get it, man. I'm confused. I am confusion. Why? Allegedly... Minka wanted out of Miami because Miami has been playing him at a lot of different positions. We just talked about this last week on the podcast. I didn't know if I was on Minka's side. He's a great talent. I didn't know if I was on Brian Flores' side. He's the new head coach. He wants to come in and change the culture. He wants to instill his method and sell it and get his players to buy into it. 
And I feel like that's a necessity for a coach to be successful. The team got to buy into your methodology, right? Got to. Now, I get confused because with Big Ben down, with A.B. gone, with Juju, I don't know. Don't so say far, it's Juju. I, I'm not going. I'm not going to allow it because I've seen people on Twitter and people have been tweeting me like, yo, it look like Juju is an assistant pimp. And I, the, the way the Steelers look this year so far, I don't feel like that's fair. I don't feel like that's fair. It might fair. not. It might not. But if we look at the current state of the Steelers, Big Ben is gone for the season. Mason Rudolph is, is unproven at the least. At, at, bro, A.B. is gone, so the targets are down. James Conner is banged up. Le'Veon Bell is gone. And you go and trade a first-round pick for a safety? I know for a fact that the Steelers have some issues on the defensive side of the ball. I know they are looking to sure up that, that nickelback, that slot corner position. They get gashed out of the slot. This is a thing everybody know. Minka can't play that position. Last I heard, Minka really wanted to be a safety. I don't know what's going on. All right, so I did a little bit of research. Pre-production. I found an article here, and I'm gonna see can I find it. All right, so I got an article here, and it says uh, regarding Minka Fitzpatrick allegedly not wanting to play multiple position, multiple positions. I'm not buying it because he played six different positions for Nick Saban at Alabama, mm-hmm. and he was quite proud of that versatility. Here's some more stuff. According to Pro Football Focus, and you know, they they go deep dive with the stats. They do. Last season, Minka played 23 snaps on the defensive line. He played 95 snaps in the box, 166 snaps at free safety, 281 snaps at wide cornerback, and 379 snaps in the slot. Woo! So, if he didn't like playing all those positions, was he not complaining about this last season? Did they just do a better job of keeping it in-house? Was it also an issue last season? But Paris, you said on the pod that you did some research and found out that it was members of the Miami Dolphins saying that they would revolt if Laramie Tonsil was traded. Yep. Laramie Tonsil was traded. Right after that, it was an issue with Kenny Stills. Kenny yep. Stills took offense to the fact that old boy was traded. He also felt some kind of way about Jay-Z's deal with the league. Flores played the Jay-Z songs repeatedly. Next thing you know, Kenny Steele's is out. I don't know if this Minka thing is related to the uh, Laramie Tunzel trade. or if All I know is this. Pittsburgh, they didn't address their issues. None of their issues that they have got addressed by this trade for Minka Fitzpatrick. It, it didn't. And the Dolphins, as much as I hate to admit it, the Dolphins won here easy. They got a number one. Their number one is going to be a top three pick this year. This number one from the Steelers is going to be top eight easy. What? You don't think Rudolph can at least get them middle stop of the it. pack? Stop it, bro. He's going to lead them into destruction. And you okay. know. Okay, stop. Okay. You think You think otherwise? I mean, I, Spade, I think, I think he could get them eight and eight. Shit. Do no. you want to bet me another damn pizza, bro? I'm about to be fat as hell off pizzas that you done paid for. I bet you a salad because you getting a little pudgy. That's what I need. <laughs> okay. Right. That's what I damn need. Okay. Salad. No bacon bits. <laughs> yeah, facts. Light dressing. Yeah, man. I just, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like they addressed their issue. Do you? So with coming back up, I think they addressed eight and eight issue. You got. The, I don't think it's the issue. Like, okay, I'll buy they, that. But you got they, them being eight and eight this year, bro. I mean, I just, Mick is going to help because he's he's a good player. Like, you know, he's going to help. Can he throw? Gonna, they they bro, they've been getting. Did you see Can the way throw? the Patriots was just throwing that thing around? Like they was throwing that thing. But he's he's going to help. But Spade, I don't think that's the the still got some other shit brewing, man. And I'm sorry to say this because I'm a Tomlin guy. He's on a hot seat, and I don't know if he's going to make it, man. And I love uh-huh. Mike Tomlin. I love Mike Tomlin. But I don't know if he's going to make it, man. Listen, I've I seen people saying, you know, Juju's looking like an assistant dude. Is showing, he show, how, how can you make that? The, and I'm not saying you, Spade. But how can people right. make that determination 
in two games. We've seen them play the Patriots, and we already know how New England get down on defense. New England will give you everything but you want, but what you want. So if you want to go to Juju, nah, that's not happening. You're not, that's not, it's not about to go down. So we already know how New England play. New England will play the Chiefs. They're going, they're going to take Tyreek Hill. They're going to double Tyreek Hill. They're going to double Kelsey. And you can have anything else on that field. But so we already, I just don't think it's fair with the uh, the ridicule that Juju has been getting, saying, "Oh, he's looking like he needs a, he's a, he's a second tier guy." Like I'm not saying he's a first tier guy, but I'm just saying it's too soon to make that assumption. That's what I'm saying about that. As far as Mink is going to help Spay, I, first of all, my, my, Miami is a train wreck, but man, do they have a ton of picks? They got a they ton do, of bro. picks, and I don't they know if they Houston have a ton first of picks. Round pick. Yeah, Pittsburgh, I don't know if they have first a, round pick. Yeah, man. I don't know if they got a ton of picks because they want to package those picks to get to move up. Well, you know, I think they're going to be pretty high in the draft anyway. But to move up to a to number one or maybe maybe get a a a a, a known play in the NFL. I don't know what they're going. I don't know what their plan is. But they got a slew of picks. As far as Big Ben being out, I think <laughs> I think Mason Rudolph is going to be serviceable. Do I think he's going to light up the? You know, do I think it's going to be, oh, shit, Drew, Drew Bledsoe went down, insert Tom Brady, and they on their way? No. But I think he's going to be serviceable. I don't think he's going to be terrible. We gonna, I mean, we're going to see. We're going to find out real soon what's, what's you know, what's going to go down. But I think he did well. He, in, he was inserted last week for Big Ben. He played well. He threw two touchdowns. I, th- I think he did solid. I think he's going to be solid. It hurts. It hurts Pittsburgh because a lot of people was picking Pittsburgh to win that division. That shit is looking like it's uh, that shit is looking like it's the Ravens' division to lose. Everybody was slurping the Browns, babe. And I mean, if you want to talk about the Browns real quick, they don't look good at all. And it's been it's been babe. We we on Twitter. We see a lot of people on Twitter. It's dudes on Twitter that that just break down plays. And man, numerous dudes has been breaking Baker shit down. They saying yo. He looking jumpy in the pocket. He don't. He look like he don't know yep. where to go with the football. He's not Taking reading the coverage. Yeah, yeah, man, they they on Baker head. So all that Browns to the Super Bowl shit. I mean, they just played the Jets, and really Baker numbers really didn't look that well until Odell broke that slant and took it to the house. I think he yeah, had like that play looked jacked up. Where was that yeah, safety it, it, going it, it on was, that it play? It looked like bro. a broke play to me. It looked like a broke play to me. <laughs> where was that safety going, bro? Yeah, That's I, all I, I know. I mean. Know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just saying, it, it looked like it's the Ravens division to win. I think, I mean, Cincinnati play tough inside the division, but I think they can still they can still be Cincinnati. Get them. T- I don't know if they played them already, but they can still get a dub in Cincinnati. You know, they they can get a dub against the Browns. So that's two wins right there. I don't know, man. I think Mason Rudolph going to be better than what you think he's going to be. I'm not saying he's going to light up the world. I'm just saying he's going to be he's going to be serviceable. They're going to they're yeah. be okay. I just don't know if it's going to be enough to make to help Tomlin keep his job. I, I actually think Tomlin's okay. I do think his seat is getting hot, but I think uh, the Rooney's, first of all, the Rooney's going to see how all this shit went down with Antonio Brown, and they're going to be like, woo, boy, you have to dodge yeah, the bullet. Yeah, they dodge the bullet. not want to deal with that shit. Facts. Le'Veon was just on the sideline crying. So maybe they dodged the bullet. And Le'Veon had a good game versus the Browns. I think he went over 100. He did not. I think he rushed for over 100. He did not. He didn't rush for over 100? He, he did not. He had 68 yards rushing, 3.2 a pop. Really? Yep. And I'm going to tell he, you something did, else. What he had receiving, he might have went over 100 total yards. Maybe total Yeah, he, yards. he went over. He had he led the team in receptions. He had 10 catches for 61. Okay, so, yeah, that's what I seen. I seen over 100 total yards. Okay. I'm going to tell you something else, non-related. Do you remember before the season started, before the Dolphins made uh, the trade for... Rosen? I don't know if that. Yeah, I think this was before Rosen, and I was telling you that we had Luke Falk, and I yeah. was like, I, I wanted Luke Falk to play. You did. Well, Luke Falk had to play in this game against the Cleveland Browns, and let's be honest, the Cleveland Browns offense don't look like they can figure it out, but that defense still look like they're official. That is. A Tell fact. me why Luke Falk came out of that game with a better QBR than Baker Mayfield. Tell me why Luke Falk was twenty of twenty five. Tell me why Luke Falk had no turnovers. Mm. Just saying. It's crazy because Miles was on his ass too, boy. They, Miles who was Miles Garrett was on that oh, ass. Hell yeah, he I was on that ass. Was looking like they was borderline flaggish. 
too. <laughs> yeah, he was. I'm like, why ass. is Miles so angry? Like, what, yeah, what is he, wrong with that guy? He was Relax. definitely like, yo, this shit can get me to the Pro Bowl. Shit. I don't yeah, know, man. I, I don't know either, man. I, I don't know. I think I Mika don't can, think it's gonna I think go he's, good. I think bro. Mika addresses an issue. I just don't know if it's the issue. I don't know what's wrong with the Steelers right now, man. Big Ben being out. I mean, Big Ben wasn't playing well the first two games anyway. He so, wasn't. So I mean, I mean, anything got to be a step up, right? I guess Demarius Thomas had one catch in that game for one for minus one yard. Demarius, Jets, you watched, bro. For the Jets. Yeah, hang hang it up, bro. You watched. Eh. Uh, let's move forward, bro. Hey, as long as somebody keep giving you a check, bro. Hey. You ain't wrong. All right, bro, let's move forward. Go ahead. We just got through talking about one really good defensive back in the AFC. Let's talk about another good defensive back in the AFC. My favorite. Matter of fact, I think both are our number yeah, one cornerback in the league going into the season, Jalen Ramsey. We yeah. know Jalen, man. Jalen play hard. He talked that talk. He walked that walk. He's, he's the type of cornerback that I would want on my team. And he just made, you know, uh, the news for the wrong reason. He and I don't know if that, that was the head coach or the DC yes, that he got into coach. it with. Head coach. Head coach. Got into it on the sideline. That was allegedly about uh, he wanted the coach to challenge a, a catch that one of the opponent receivers made. And after that whole thing, the Jacksonville Jaguars emerged from that game 0 and 2, and Jalen Ramsey said he wanted to be traded. And people thought it was based off of the interaction with the coach. Jalen Ramsey said that does not have anything to do with it and he's more upset with the front office and the way they running shit up there now i don't really know what that means because i feel like they try sound to like you want to get paid to me sound like you want to get paid to me oh you think it's all about that right there i mean i mean and then I, if i'm not mistaken i i read the owner i think it was the owner came out and was like we're gonna we're gonna pay Jalen rams so we have well, to wait first of all i want to say this too i don't mean to cut you off bro now, but I want I want to say this. Shout out to Ramsey because all this trade news came out and he could have easily easily powdered and everything. He played Thursday night and, 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 and went out there and was a professional. That's all we do. At, our Florida State DBs know how to go out there and be a professional. That's it. So he went out there and was a professional and he played. He played. <laughs> I think it's about money though. Go ahead, I'm trying to make this shit about Florida State. Bro. I'm not making Stop. I'm just saying. We... Y'all just barely beat UL Monroe. This ain't the time to be trying to big up your city. That's because okay? we still got Willie damn Taggart. Man, that's who like, for Willie, y'all dehydrated chance, asses with a loss. I don't know loss. why you want Willie Taggart to stay there. Because you think if we get another coach, you think that lower y'all chances of, my, you know, of Miami beating us if we get another coach. You think Willie Taggart's sweet. That's what you think. No, I think y'all sweet. And I don't think the guy holding the clipboard <laughs> changed shit. I got a quote from Jalen Ramsey right here. Jalen says, and I quote, it was something that's kind of been building over a little bit of time. It has nothing to do with my teammates here. I love all my teammates. It has nothing to do with the city. I love the city here. Still doing my charity work here. Still out with the fans, signing autographs, taking pictures, whatever it may be. I love the city here. I love my teammates. But it was more so with the front office and the organization. So, I tell you what, he said, I called my agent after the game. After the game, of course, it was tough in the locker room already. The incident on the sideline with me and coach, I didn't think much of that in particular because that happens from time to time. That happens all across the league. We see Tom Brady get into it with his coaches. He's the greatest I of agree. all time. First of all, he's not the greatest of all time, Jalen. The greatest of all time name is Dan Motherfucking Reno. Okay, Joe Montana. Uh, excuse I you, to, you I got the get wrong that name off too. My chest. Now I, I look. I like Jalen Ramsey, but let's let's get the goat talk right. Ain't nobody can throw the pig skin like Dan Marino. All right, Joe. Now, uh, Joe fighting Irish Montana. Man, that was Rudy's team. Joe just was lucky. <laughs> to be there. You know Yo, what, what is wrong with you today, man? If Joe don't sit his ass down, is it a movie called Joe? No, it's a movie <laughs> it called Rudy. Be. It should be. Well, hey, that. Joe Montana well, debunked all that shit and said that shit ain't happen like that. Joe said it wasn't nobody chanting Rudy. If they was chanting anything, they were saying Montana. That's what Joe said. Boy, they wasn't. Yeah, man. Uh, so here's where I want to go with this Jalen Ramsey thing. First of all, uh, what, what's the dude name? Miles Jack? Am I yeah. jacking that up? Miles Jack Miles is Jack. a linebacker on this team. And he and Jalen Ramsey are, are friends, obviously. And they asked Miles Jack, like, how do you see this thing? 
working out. And he said, man, I hope they pay him. I hope they give him a long-term contract. When that contract's up, I hope they franchise tag him until they can work out another deal. I hope he's here forever. I hope he finishes his career here. And, I mean, I don't think you can get any higher praise from a teammate than that. But the fact of the matter is, until they make some shake, Jalen Ramsey won't out, bro. Two-point question. One, I ain't even going to ask you should Jacksonville make it work because that's an obvious. Do you think they work it out before this man get traded? And if they don't and he get traded, where would you like to see him? Because everyone is saying the Chiefs, and that's not my answer. I, I would like to see him with the Cowboys, but we ain't got no money. You would, of course. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I think they work it out. That's first. I think they, I think they pay him. Okay, I think they pay. Him. I think okay. they pay. Him. So that that debunks anything being traded. But if they don't, clearly you like to see him with the Cowboys. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would like to see him with the Cowboys, but I mean, I just don't think that's that's you know going to happen. But I mean, if I had to pick a team. I, I could see the Chiefs, but I don't want them with the Chiefs. Um, I, I'm hearing the Ravens. I heard the Ravens. I, I seen going. that the Dolphins was interested in them. Hey, that's and what I, I want to talk about right now. I seen right the there. Eagles. I seen Eagles. Wait, slow down. Slow down. Go back one. What, Dolphins? I seen Eagles, hey. too. I damn sure don't want them with the All Eagles. Right. Go I back one. Go Eagles. back one. Before the Eagles, who you said? Oh, my gosh. But, I mean, I, I would love you. to see them with the Cowboys. I just want Ramsey to be somewhere, you know... I, what about Tampa Bay? Nah. Got, what about Miami? Go, Spade. Go. Nah, I mean, I'm serious. This I'm not trolling, bro. Listen, if if Jalen, if, if they don't work it out in Jacksonville, which first of all, I'm with you. They're going to work it out. You got to. He's the best cornerback in pro football. You got to make it work. I mean, are, he might be their best player. He's their best player. I'm trying to, maybe know. Calais Campbell. I'm going to say Calais was fucking shit up. Yeah, he was. He was destroying the Titans line. I Jeez. mean, it was what? crazy. Double him and chip her back. What the hell are y'all doing, Titans? Man, that big rascal was moving in different spots down hey, the yo, line. Hey, yo, he was how telling you... the other D linemen, like, yo, I'm about to be over there, yo. Go, go over there. He was like, let me like, get right there. Let me switch with you. Second, how, how do you lose Calais Campbell? He like 6'8". How you lose the 6'8 D linemen? Facts. Facts. <laughs> Just look for the tall dude. Facts. But, uh, yeah, man, if for some miracle reason they don't make it work, I don't think the Dolphins can lure him in because this is a passionate guy that want to win, clearly. And the losing that the Dolphins got going on right now, and this shit going to feel terrible. He he don't, he didn't like losing in Jacksonville. But right. I like that about him. I like that he don't like losing. And, and I, ain't, I ain't even mad at the Dolphin players. It's like I can't do this losing shit I want out. But if they could somehow sell to him that, look, man, we got Xavier Howard, and if we get you, we y'all got not get, all let me these. Catch you up, bro. Y'all not getting Jalen Ramsey, bro. Bro, bro y'all not, not getting him. We speaking, at, we speaking at hypotheticals, bro. Relax. Bro, you not y'all not getting Jalen Ramsey, bro. Just stop. Bro. Like I don't even want to waste no time on this shit. Y'all you not ain't got no Jaylen imagination. Ramsey. You ain't used Jeez. to play with little cars and shit. Y'all not, he if he going, probably. Let me say this: If he go anywhere, he's probably going to the Chiefs, and I don't want him with the Chiefs. Bro, I was in the middle of me making my pitch to the guy, bro. Y'all not getting Jay- Yo, Lord. Hypothetically. Go ahead, hypothetically. Spade. Go, Spade. I'm sorry, Jalen. Where was I? All right, Jalen, look. All right. If we get you and pair you with Xavier Howard, we got It would have been best- nice to keep Minka, too. But. Ooh, I'm going to get him. Oh, it would have been. It would have been. It, you're right. And trust me, we wanted Minka. But Minka won't out. You know what I'm saying? You can get on and get off. That's what we tell him. Yo, we tell him, you know. But anyway, back to my pitch. Oh, man, it would have been great with Minka. With that young defense and all these picks, Jalen, we can let you be a part of our draft process. You can damn near handpick these some bitches. You just tell us who you want. That's what I would have told him. He wants that's some points on offense. That's what he want. Well, yeah, that's next year. That's next year. Same thing I tell my wife when she asks for a new car. Next year. <laughs> yeah. That shit been working for years. I don't know why the Dolphins can't do it. I'm good at it. That's next year. That's all I got, bro. Jalen Ramsey ain't going nowhere, but if you do, man. I don't do, see him going nowhere either. I, he already be, loves Florida. Where you play, play college ball at, LaParis? Florida State, FSU. And, I mean, what state is that DBU. in? DBU. That's in Florida. DBU. The who? Who be what? DBU. Oh, anyway. Ed Reed went there? Ed Reed went there? 
What about Sean Taylor? Sean Taylor went there? Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. We'll stop right Man, you ready there. to move on? I'm ready to move on. I'm, I'm what about Antrell Rowe? Antrell Rowe went there? <laughs> Samari? The other one. The real one. Samari Antrell was, was better way than Samari better than Antrell. And, and, what? Samari was way better than Antrell Rowe. Way better. In college and in the pros. It way better. It depends on how you look at it. If you squint. If you squint. Uh, looking like Antrell. Spade, let's move on, bro. Cause let's move on. Spade, I, I wanna, I wanna have. I was about to say have some fun, but it's really not fun. We, we're gonna talk about a few quarterbacks, and I wanna get your thoughts on on things, man. Okay. Now, a lot of people, Spade, a lot of people, they be including you, including me, bro. You don't know me. We very hard on, we very hard on Jameis Winston, and we said, yo, if if Winston can't get it right with the quarterback whisperer. We don't know, right? We said that, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't feel like Mariota gets the same slack, and I know somebody's going to be like, oh, Mariota had 100 coordinators, 100 different coaches. Jameis Winston did, too. Jameis Winston going on, like, three, four coaches, three, four offensive coordinators. So it's the same thing. Only thing, don't, some people saying, oh, Mariota been hurt. Okay, that, that's fair. That's fair. Jameis been suspended. <laughs> I mean, shit, oh. by his own doing, but he was suspended nonetheless. Spade, I want to get your thoughts on Mariota. Cam Newton. Cam Newton isn't playing this week. I want to get your thoughts on the state of Cam because people got a lot to say about Cam Newton. I mean, they just fired for Paul Feinbaum ass move up on national yeah, TV. They lit his yeah. ass up because he had some negative, th- negative things to say about Cam and had some positive things to say about Eli. Speaking of Eli, yeah, Eli just got benched. It's Daniel Jones season. First of all, people been saying people been saying to me, it's DJ season. You don't get a nickname until until you go out there and perform. Ain't no damn DJ. His name is Daniel Bartholomew Jones. That's his name. Daniel Bartholomew. Bartholomew. <laughs> yes, Daniel Bartholomew Jones. I don't know if Bartholomew is that if that's his name, but it seemed like it fit. Daniel so Bartholomew it Jones. It should be. That's okay. that man's name. Uh, so I'm Eli got bench paid. And we got to talk about Drew Brees being out. And Teddy Bridgewater entered that game last week. I thought Teddy did okay with the circumstances. I mean, shit. When he could stand up straight. I'm about to say. When I mean, Aaron was Donald his... wouldn't blow in his damn chest. Yeah. Over. So, I mean, and also, you know, Sean Payton didn't come out this week and, and name a starter yet. So, we don't know if it's going to be Teddy Bridgewater this week or Taysom Hill. Spade. I mean, pick where you want to start. I want you to... Touch on Mariota, Cam Newton, Drew Brees, and Eli being bitch. Talk to your boy. Woo, boy, that's a lot. It's a lot mm-hmm. to unpack. Uh, where shall we start? Get start we with Cam, because I think that's the easiest one. Okay, yeah, man. Look, I'm a Cam Newton fan, though, so I'm biased. Before I even start, I'm going to say this. Cam Newton played ball at Westlake, in the Westlake area here. Well, I, here, I'm not in Georgia anymore, but in the Atlanta area. And I just believe Cam a winner, man. I saw Cam win at the high school level. I saw him go to college where he was Tim Tebow's backup, where he got in some trouble at the University of Florida, left there, went to JUCO, walked on, uh, got the starting spot, took them to the championship, won that shit, left, went to Auburn, got that starting spot. They said, we got this playbook, but throw this shit out. You just, you know, we'll just design the offense around you. Took that team to the championship. Won that shit, went to the league, listened to Mel Kuyper, and everybody said why he shouldn't be drafted, went to the league, took the Carolina Panthers to the Super Bowl, didn't win that shit, but man, if that's if that's any other quarterback's track record to win like that on every level, people will be crowning this guy one of the best winners in the sport, and I hate that they don't do it for Cam. People don't like the way Cam dressed, cool, who gives a shit? People don't like that Cam celebrate first downs and dance in the end zone, Cool, who gives a shit? The same people that bitch about Cam dancing in the end zone, they're the same folks that still can do the Jamal Anderson Dirty Bird and the Icky Woods, uh, yep. whatever the hell he used to do. Icky Shuffle. So, that Icky Shuffle. I hate that people pick and choose who they like. and they, they We can do this. And I'm going to call you out on it. You my bro, I can do this. My boy Mark, who has been a guest on this show before, told me, I don't like that Cam celebrate a first down. First downs happen so frequently in football. Why are you celebrating? Get your ass back to the huddle. 
The same man told me in a later conversation, when I told him I get tired of seeing Steph shimmying his ass down the court after a three, he's like, yeah, he made a shot, let the man celebrate. Man, threes happen more than fucking first downs. Threes happen almost every possession in the NBA. So why can you be excited about a three but not a first down? So we do that. And, I, and I'm as guilty as anybody else. When we like a person, we defend the things they do. Cam Newton, first of all, I don't like the Carolina Panthers as an organization. Let's start. Me there. neither. I mean, let's get that They've never really the gotten way. him adequate right help. They've never gotten him adequate help. He's always had a subpar O-line. I agree. He's always had one at the max, maybe two reliable targets in terms of receivers. They, they, I want to say I mean, never, but I feel even, like a couple of the years. I, I mean, catch you up, bro, but can we even consider Steve Smith his target? Like, that was more so uh, Jake DeLone guy. That was Jake DeLone guy. Like, how long? I want to, I swear, I don't know because I should have looked it up. I don't know how long Cam Newton has, Steve Smith. I want to say maybe two years. Well, Maybe let me see if I can look that up. When they, but I mean, um, when they went to the Super that. Bowl with Jake Jake Delhomme, I think it was Musim Muhammad and Steve Smith, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody gonna correct me if I'm wrong. So Cam got there in 2011, and I don't know when Steve Smith left. But I'm not gonna look I it up. So had, you got Cam? I look up Steve. Go ahead and continue yeah, what you were saying. They though. had some years together. Cam Newton has his his issues. I'm not gonna paint Cam like he a perfect quarterback. At times, he displays some accuracy issues. At times, he's displayed uh, poutiness, if, if you if you want to call it that. He gets pouty after losses. And, he's paid out. and that's, not, that's talking, not a big deal for me. But when me and you talking, I always tell you, like, I, I, I'm looking at Cam body language. I call him out on that. Do I not? Yes, you do. I don't you like really his body do. language. Go ahead. And, and you actually just said this the other day, like, bro, I don't like Cam body language. He looked like he don't want to be out there. If you look at what happened with Andrew Luck, and I'm not trying to compare them one for one. Relax, y'all. It's crazy. Andrew Luck I was going to say the point. same thing. Go, Spade. You preach it right now. I like you preach. <laughs> Andrew Luck got to a point where he said, you know what? I, I'm getting killed out here. I'm hurt all the time. I'm sore. And now I'm starting to be concerned about my quality of life. And, right. and once... Once your quality of life is in the forefront of your mind and, and football or whatever the sport, a job you're doing is in the in the back of your mind, it's time to make a business decision. And I honestly think it's time for Cam to probably consider hanging it up. And not because I think Cam not a good player, but because I like Cam. I don't want to see Cam walking around here jacked up a later in life, not being able to walk. You know, you see some of your old favorite players in their older life. They can't walk straight. Like, I don't, I don't want that for any of these guys. I feel like Cam Newton has proven whatever he need to prove. The people who still don't believe Cam Newton is a good player or a winner, they just hate us, bro. You can actually win the Super Bowl, and they still not going to give you your props. Right. And those are the type of people, you can't sway their opinion anyway. Their mind was right. made up before they saw you play a down in football. That's, that's a you can't sway their opinions either way. Cam Newton, man, he to me, he deserved to be given a tour. They should give him the same shit they gave Pey Peyton Manning. That, I, and, and that's big talk, but that's where I got Cam Newton in my mind. Spade, how, when, when did you say uh, Cam get got there? His rookie year was 2011. So, okay, 2011. So Steve was there 20, 2011, 2012. And so I said two years. They had three years together. And let me tell you, I got his stuff too. Let me tell you what he did. So he played 16 games in 11, 16 games in 12, and 15 in, in, 15 in 2013. Steve Smith yeah. had... 2011 had 79 catches uh, for <laughs> 79 for 13, 9, 4. So 1,300, almost 1,400 yards and seven TDs. 2012, he had 73 catches for almost 1,200 yards, four TDs. And uh, 2013, he had 64 catches for 745 and four TDs. He was and hurt that, in 2013, right? He didn't have a full whole season, right? No, he played 15 games. He played 15. He had okay. 110 targets. He had 110 okay. targets. But, uh, I mean, aside from those years and, I mean, two, two, two of those three years, he ate. Two of those three years, he ate. So, and we know G-Rag been there. But, I mean, yo, it, it, the, the blocking's been terrible. I, I, I agree with you 100%, man. Spade, and I was going to mention Andrew Luck. Would anybody be shocked if Cam Newton was to come out and be like, I retire, I'm banged up? And it's crazy. I would celebrate it, bro, because I don't want to see that players, man bro. jacked up. 
I've been I, I played football for um, for damn near half my life, more than half my life actually. Spade. Football players in their mind is thought, yo, if you can walk, you can play. So all that, oh, if you, you know, my coach used to say something like, yo, you can't go let somebody know. Meaning, yo, if you can't play, you need to let me know. I don't know what you feel. And ain't nobody, yeah. if you a football player at heart, ain't nobody about to be like, yo. Unless you really like on some crutches like, yo, I, I can't do this. Ain't no football player about to be like, yo, I ain't, I can't play. And Cam Newton out there trying to tough it up. And you spay me and you in the party, and I'm like, man, I don't like Cam body language, but clearly you can see something is up. They it was fourth in inches, fourth in goal. It was fourth in goal inside the one, not at the one, not behind the one. They were inside the one, and they and they decided to do that play with McCaffrey. And cool if they get in, you be like, oh, that shit was genius. Everybody was expecting quarterback sneak, but you got six five Cam Newton. If Cam Newton just jump, stretch the ball out, and bring it back quick, that's a touchdown. Yep. And, and for whatever reason, they didn't call that. And in my it's paid. me and you was in the party, and I'm like, yo, something is up. Why don't you quarterback sneak there? Something is yep. up. So I, I just think to condemning Cam and saying all these negative things about Cam, what people are saying, is not fair, man. That man has gave, given everything to this organization. Clearly, they best play it. It's really spade. People was getting on you because you was like, yo, it's Cam and C Mac, and that's pretty much it. Yes. And people yes. people was on your head, and that's basically what it is. Now I, I like DJ Moody, do these young players still trying to figure it out. And G Red, let's be honest. He he played big that game. He had he might have had hundred yards that game. But you look at you look at the way he running, he I mean, he ain't beating nobody, bro. He's slow. And he said that game if his back was hurting him so bad that if he took a hard hit that he probably wouldn't even be able to finish the game. That was that coin toss. Yeah, he was hurt on, going into the game. Come on, These man. These guys are beat up, bro. They are, man. I, I don't like the way the Panthers run they, run they shit, man. I don't like the way they run it. I don't. Still ain't got no That's, O-line. They was on Cam. They was getting in Cam ass that game, man. Let's, oh, let's go from, from Cam to uh, Jameis. Let's talk oh. Jameis. Okay. We've already said it, man. It's a make or break season for Jameis. Um, I'm not willing to go as far as to say, like, I'm not willing to call Jameis a bust. I, I've worked with a lot of Tampa Bay fans now that I'm here in Florida, and Tampa fans, they're split. Like, I, I know some guys that love Jameis. I know some guys that hate Jameis Winston. They despise the guy. And they will probably tell you he's a bust. Is it I'm his not play or is it his off the field shit? It's the whole, it's the whole thing, man. Because okay. I mean, he he has some issues as well. He, it's strange, man. But when they had Djax, man, this dude, what he would overthrow Djax. <laughs> Djax is running eighty miles an hour. He throw the shit <laughs> where Djax couldn't get to it. Um, and Jameis is just extremely inconsistent. Like you can see him sometimes and be like, oh, Jameis look like he getting in the next game. You, the passes will be all over the place. That's a fact. I don't know. What causes that? I don't know if he need to get with a one on one trainer. LaParis, you know more about that than me. I don't know. I he know also that we say like this mental, is a, mental mistakes too. Where it just be like, "Yo, you in tons. field goal range? Don't force the pass." Tons, like that one. tons, and he'll tons. force it to be a turnover. And don't get me wrong. As I say that, I'm not. I'm not comparing it to the likes of you. I. It's very easy to sit on the couch oh, yeah. at your house. And look from God view and see what should have been done. Word. I'm saying in comparison to other good or great quarterbacks, their decision making when the pressure's on, Jameis' decision making when the pressure's on, it's not there. I'll just be honest, it's not there. But we want to move laterally, a parallel. We want to move over to Marcus Mariota, right? Please, please. Uh, I'm looking at Jameis' numbers since he's been in the league. Man, he got 15,000 passing yards. He's got 90 touchdowns. He's got 61 picks. Who was that? Who's that? Is that? That's Jameis. Okay. I come over and look at Mariota. Mariota got twelve thousand passing yards, seventy three TDs, forty two picks. Okay. So, at a glance, I mean, at a glance, it looked like. Wait, let me look at attempts because it clearly looked like. Oh yeah, like Jameis throw the ball a whole lot more than Mariota. So I mean, that I mean that in itself is what it is. Both of these guys were billed to be what RG3 and Andrew Luck were when they yep. came out one and two. 
Yep. And say what you will, Andrew Luck just walked out of this sport as a gladiator with the respect of all his peers. Everybody knows that Andrew Luck showed up to play, and when they could protect him, which wasn't often, he got it done. Right. RG3 had one of the most impressive rookie seasons I ever seen before in my life. Only injury derailed RG3, and then he got in the other day and threw a couple dots just to show y'all that he still can do it. Right. I still think RG3 could play, and both of those guys, to me, lived up to the hype. The Paris, neither of these guys lived up to I the hype. I agree 100%. Neither agree. of these guys lived up to the hype. When you take a quarterback one or two, when you take a quarterback in the top five, you got some expectations for these guys to be talked about in barbershops and, and water coolers across offices across the country. I just don't feel like either of these guys hit the mark. Is it a situation, in your opinion, that both of these teams that took them was in such bad shape, or is it these guys? Because you're right. Mariota had a new OC, I think, every damn year for a minute there. And to be fair... I think Jameis has some better pieces around him. I know Jameis has some better pieces around him than Mariota. Mariota ain't got no Mike Evans out there. He ain't he had no d out there. He don't got a, he don't. I mean, he got a Delaney Walker. He, he got an O.J. Howard. got a Cam Brake. I mean, so it, I I feel like both teams had. Let me say this. I agree with you, Spade. I feel, I feel Jameis had better with. Bet, I feel Jameis Winston has better pieces. But I feel both teams still have talent. I think they both have talented Enough team that they both should be playing way better than what my, now way better than what they are. But my my point is, we hear Jameis gets to get the slack. I don't know if I hear Mariota gets the slack. It's always excuses for Mariota, and I don't know if that's because you know we hear we hear oh Mariota he's, he's a more likable guy. guy. Huh? I was gonna say he's a more likable guy. Yeah, I don't know I, I, which Spade. You know, I'm able listen. I got my issues with James Winston, just the knucklehead shit he do, and just grabbing an Uber driver if he did or didn't. You know, like that shit is just dumb. You in the you in the limelight, regardless of whether you think you a superstar or not, you are. So you just got to be smarter in situations like that. So I don't even want to talk about. I'm keeping it. I'm talking straight play. I feel both of these teams have enough talent that that they that both quarterbacks should play better. Now, I just don't hit feel Mariota gets the slack. And I think it's because of what you said, Spade. I feel more people is like, oh, Mariota's such a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a good kid. We like him. I don't think people like Jamie. So they be like, you know what? Oh, remember the crab legs? Oh, he touched the with the, the driver and blah, blah, blah. I think I think a lot of that got to do with why Jameis gets the slack and Mariota doesn't. Now, we watched the game Thursday, Spade, and Calais Campbell was having a damn field day. But we also seen Mariota miss guys wide, butt naked. They was butt naked open. Like, they was yep. butt naked open. And, it, yep. I mean, people was like, oh, well, Mariota got to deliver that. I don't want to condemn a, a, a quarterback for missing a wide open guy. It happens. But if that was somebody else, they would have condemned it. Spade, me and you was in the party like, yo, where the hell is Ryan Tannehill? Because we think if Tannehill was in the game, they would have had a better shot to win that joint. Hell, yeah. That's what we think. So I mean, I I understand I understand the criticism for Jameis. I'm just saying, where is it at for Mariota? I guarantee you, it's gonna be people in these comments. They're gonna be like, oh well, Mariota has some injury issues. The office coordinator, shit, Jameis done had a new coach damn near every year he been in the league, a new head coach. I mean, I I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, that's all I'm saying. Where is because I'm looking at Mariota and. Spade, I'm this close, and I'm doing, like, my little finger touching together. I'm that close to saying, Mariota ain't it. Mariota ain't We're already saying Jameis is on the hot seat. So, we criticize the shit out of Jameis. I'm this close to saying, it's time for them to move on from Mariota. I'm that close. That's where I'm at with it. I don't know if yeah. you agree with that, but that's where I'm at. Uh, let me ask you this. Go ahead. I say it's three tiers of quarterback. Do you think it's three or four? Say it again. I'm sorry. I break down quarterbacks into three tiers. Would you say that it's three or is it four? Uh, I would opinion? go with. I, I would go with. Yeah, I would say that. It's three. I would say yeah. I would say so. So I mean, if it's three, I got both of these guys in that second tier. Yeah, the second. Uh, will you put them in the second or the last? I'm putting them in the second tier. Okay. I mean, you got I mean, them in the third. I mean, I got them in the bottom. Third is second. basically saying they're the not. They shouldn't second. be an NFL starter. You saying they shouldn't be a starter? I'm. I got them in the in the second tier at the bottom. 
I, I think I probably got them there too. I got them there too. So they damn do. So we damn near got them. Like yo, we, this shit might mean. I, SP, we different. I don't know if everybody have them there. I don't know. I would say we got first tier one through ten. Next year eleven through twenty. 20 through I don't 32. Know you, I don't even know if first tier goes 1 through 10. I think it's more like 1 through 5. Okay. 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 Yeah, man. I, I don't know. So talk to me about Breeze being out, man, and how they doing Teddy. Teddy might not get the start. They might start Taysom Hill. Now, you said something in pre-production. So, you said they love Taysom over there. They love Hill. They do. So They really do. Breeze being out. I think Breeze out for how many weeks? Six weeks? Six. Yep. So they got six yeah, weeks. Yeah, I was of, watching something. A decision to make. I, I was watching some NFL show, and Rex Ryan was on that show. Mm. And, you know, I get it. Rex Ryan, to me, he the TV version of uh, Lane Kiffin, you know. He okay. say a lot of hot takes. You know, that's that's kind of his thing. And they was talking on the show, like, is this team going to stick with Teddy Bridgewater? Or are they going to Taysom Hill? And Rex Ryan was like, I feel like they got to go Taysom Hill. We we already know Teddy Bridgewater don't have what it takes. He's already shown fair. us that. And I was that's like, fair. he did? This guy took the Vikings to the playoffs where a kicker shanked the kick for that's them to lose. That's a fact. I don't think the only thing Teddy Bridgewater showed us was that he had a terrible injury. That's all. Other than that, Teddy showed us nothing but promise. And I'm going to tell you something else is crazy. It might feel like Teddy Bridgewater has been around a long time. Teddy Bridgewater, like 25 years old, bro. It is crazy. Teddy is still hella young. So to me, it's a no brainer. If it's me, I'm going Teddy Bridgewater. What they like about Taysom Hill, though, is he's not your t- traditional quarterback, which is funny because I want to double back around to the Cam Newton thing. Another thing that hurt Cam is people try to, and maybe with good intentions, let me say that, maybe for the better intentions, uh, intentions of extending Cam's career, they tried to change Cam. They tried to not let Cam be Cam, right? And then even when you see Cam run or you see Lamar run, you know, you get the comments about him being running backs and not really quarterbacks. But yeah. that's what the Saints like about Taysom Hill. They have played this guy at wide receiver. This guy has returned some kicks. He's taking some snaps under center. So they like his versatility. I've seen him beat the up back on punt when they punt. I'm him telling beat the you, up dog. back because it, yeah. it leaves the perception, oh, he can run it, he can pass it if they, if they were to fake it. I, like, come on. Go, go, Spade. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So that that's what they like about Taysom Hill. But to me, if if I want my team to be in the best position possible when Drew Brees comes back so that we can try to make a playoff push, because if we're being honest, man, the Saints, the last two postseasons of the NFL has screwed the Saints over one way or the other. We saw the worst missed call probably in the history of the NFL in the last NFC, uh, yeah, NFC Championship game. And then the year before that, somebody just completely goofed on a damn tackle. Just, uh, just the strangest it, shit. If you I saw mean, that in the video wanna, game, the game last game, the last game they played, they reco- they they scooped and scored, and they called it, they blew it dead, and they didn't even score on that play. So they just missed yep, because yeah, they got man, screwed they again. Got bad luck with the strike. Yeah, they got screwed again. To me though, is it's, it's a no brainer. I want that team to be in the best shape possible for when Drew Brees comes back. And to me, the the best option is Teddy Bridgewater, bro. It's I not agree. even close to me. I agree, not but then we, we, we're probably in the minority with that, too. I mean, I agree with you 100%, Spade. I mean, I don't think I got to add anything else with that. But I want to just say, listen, if anybody can figure out a way to... You know, Sean Payton is an offensive guru. So if he, I'm pretty sure if you're going to put Taysom Hill in... I'm pretty sure it's going to be some some gimmicky shit that's going to have people being like, "Oh my god!" So I don't know. I don't know if, and maybe I'm wrong. I ain't never really seen past the rock like that. I don't know if he, if Hill is going to be able to stand back there and pass the ball 50 times. Now I'm not saying Teddy Bridgewater can stand back there and pass it 50 times. I'm saying we've seen. I think Teddy. Let me say this. I think Teddy Bridgewater is a better pocket passer than Hill. That's what I'm saying. That's how I feel. They, yeah. I heard somebody. I heard somebody say Taysom Hill is uh, he that he reminds them of another guy with number fifteen on his chest, and they was talking about Tim Tebow. We know Tim Tebow can not throw. <laughs> so, Spade, talk to me about if you're done with that. Talk to me about Eli getting bitched and and Daniel Jones getting the start. Did the Giants pull the trigger too early? Um, I don't feel like Eli's been bad. Me neither. But 
Yeah, that what they going this year? Like it's it's almost like, I, what are you saving them for? I, that that's what I don't get. Like, if the plan is to send Eli off on a tour, it's okay to be bad this year. We're gonna get a couple of picks, and then we're gonna throw them out there next year. Then that, if that's the plan, stick to it. But if if you if you really want to know what the kid got, because you know what, if the team is gonna be bad this year, it's at least it's a it's a couple of good quarterbacks that's supposed to hit the draft this year. You know, Tua's gonna hit the draft. I assume Herbert's gonna hit the draft. Uh, I I honestly don't think the Dolphins are still in Tua sweepstakes. What about so, Fromm? And Jake Fromm. And Fromm. So I mean, and, and it's probably more I'm not even naming, but it's a few quarterbacks that's gonna hit the market. <laughs> Yeah. This is your time. Now, look, I feel like you took Daniel Jones so high that he kind of got to be the man, but shit. Oh, no. Nah. We just he, saw. That, I, if the Giants take a, another QB, no way. I think now, it's highly unlikely. But yeah, I, highly I do unlikely, think but I mean, to see what you It got. just happened. So, let me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It just happened in Arizona. We don't know. Yeah. But I, I think you, you, you got to see what happens. You got to see what you got. I, I feel like the only reason they made this move, bro, is because the other players are there. Like, yo, like it's it's and a clip circulating around on on the internet, and it looked like Saquon was like, "Put Daniel in." It looked like his mouth said, "Put Daniel in." So, if Saquon say that, and it looked like that's what he said, you don't want to get you don't want Saquon to be upset. Trust me, that's your best player. So you don't want to get him all, you know. <laughs> you don't want to get him all up, you know, mad, and then he'd be like, you know what? Bet. Once my joint up, I'm out. So it looked like his mouth said, put Daniel in, but I think that's why they made the move. Cause I think they like, you know what? A a, a different a different voice, a change. You know, they they seen how he was looking in the preseason. And and, and I I would assume they thinking anything gotta be better than this. Anything. So I got to ask you this, babe. I think I asked you this um, last week, but I'm going to ask you again. Eli got like a 500 record. I think he won 116 and 116. Eli won two Super Bowls. He beat New England twice. He even beat the Patriots when they were undefeated. Um, yeah. He won two Super Bowl MVPs. Yep. I got to ask you, do is Eli uh, um, Hall of Famer to you? Mm. Without his numbers right here in front of me, I I. I can get him. I can get him if you want him. You want him? I want to not be on the hot seat. Without right even now. without even getting the numbers, I'm going to tell you. I think he gets in because of those Super Bowls. I think he gets in. I don't know. I I don't know. I you can't want even. You you want his numbers? No, I just want to no. get off the hot seat. You said you don't want to what? I just want to get off the hot seat. Nah, I'm gonna give you the numbers. He won 16 and 116, bro. His completion percentage is 60%. Eli got 56,537 passing yards. He has 362 touchdowns and 241 interceptions. Shit. Yes. I mean, is, is, he, a, is he a Hall of Famer, Spade? Um... I've never been one of those that care about first ballot, but I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. But I think at some point, some point he he gets in. I think he gets in. I think I think he gets in. Just off he won two Super Bowls and who he beat the Patriots, undefeated Patriots. And some people gonna be like, oh, it was fluky. David Tyree caught the ball on his helmet. Yeah, we seen Julian Edelman catch the junk off in Atlanta, play a foot. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, this, man. Uh, miss me with the fluky shit. You ain't never lied. So, I think he gets this. But anything else you want to talk about with these QBs? No. Get them out of here. We can move Get on. Get them out of here. We can move on. It's been a great right, show. Bro. Yeah, so far, look. We talked about Antonio Brown being released. Yeah. Minka being traded. Yeah. Jalen Ramsey won the trade. Yep. Yeah. A few quarterbacks around the league, some that could possibly be pondering retirement, others that we wondering if their teams need to be pondering benching their ass. And boy, in the spirit of that, let's go to collegiate football. Let's talk about a coach that, bro, 
I don't know what to say about it. Let me jump right to the point. Where, where, <laughs> Where blue at? Where, where they call this at? Big blue, go big, big blue. blue. Ain't that what they call this at? Where big yep, blue big at? Blue. Big blue, what the hell is going on in Michigan? I want to talk about Jim McMahon, bro. I'm serious. Jim, Jim McMahon? McMahon. Listen, uh, why I say Jim McMahon? <laughs> Jim McMahon? Can we talk about Jim McMahon? I, I like mean, Jim McMahon. I like Jim McMahon too. Hey, matter of fact, the guy I'm trying to talk about was Jim McMahon backup. I'm talking Perfect. about Jim Harbaugh. Can we yeah. talk about Jim Harbaugh? Yeah, let's talk about him. Bro, Jim Harbaugh had Stanford looking like the real deal. He did. Jim Harbaugh had the 49ers looking like the real deal. He did. Michigan had Jim Harbaugh looking like the savior. He did. But these results ain't looking too good, fam. Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines both look like poo. They look like poo, fam. They survived a dog fight with a uh, Army football team that deserved to win. I was mad Michigan pulled that win out. Mm-hmm. The Paris, how hot is the seat that Jim Harbaugh is sitting in? Is hell an option? Jim is hell an option? Because it should be lava hell hot. <laughs> hella, hell and hella is an option. Yeah, it should be hella hell lava hot. That's, that's a spade. Not only did Harbaugh get this, get this job and come in swinging a big stick, talking about he gonna get all the recruits and we gonna kick Ohio State ass, which that did not happen. But say, they got that work today. They played Wisconsin and they they built this up as the early big game. Wisconsin, uh, I think they number thirteen if I'm not mistaken. Michigan, they was number eleven. They was up in uh, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Spay. And I, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, we started recording while the game was still on, if I'm not mistaken. And I, last mm-hmm. time I checked, I think the score was 35, 35-7. And I mean, Michigan was getting gassed, bro. And when I mean gassed, I mean just body on body. We handing it to uh, Taylor, and we coming right, we coming north and south. We running the ball north and south. Stop it, Michigan. And boy, oh boy. Taylor was toting that thing, and they was getting gashed. Taylor went to the – if anybody didn't watch the game, Taylor went to the – um, he went to the tent. I don't know what was wrong. He, he, he did return late in the game. But they had this white boy. <laughs> they, listen, listen. We can talk about white running backs in another, another show. But they had this white boy at running back. Spade. That dude gotcha. was toting that rock, bro. He was yeah, toting man. that rock. Now, we know, Spade, man, you, you're not really an offensive line guy. But Spade, you you know, offensive. We, when we do the use, like what school is known for the use, mm-hmm. Wisconsin will definitely be up there when it be like O line and you. Wisconsin always got a massive O line that push people around. Like it's it's is um them is Notre Dame. It's a team like Iowa. They always got a massive O line. They line up in I for formation and they pound that damn thing. So. They was just pushing them. Spade. Harbaugh came in Michigan and was talking big shit. Yeah. Not on, Harbaugh came in there as this pro style offense guy. I think right now they don't even run the pro style offense, Spade. They done switched it up and now they run the spread. Spade. Harbaugh was a quarterback. He had Andrew Luck, if I'm not mistaken, at Stanford. I think he was there when he had Andrew Luck. Yep. Sp- I mean, this dude, Shea Patterson, he was supposed to. Spade, they. Uh, listen. I've been hard on coaches this co- this college season, bro. I want a few guys fired. And I, listen, Spade, you told me you don't think they're gonna fire Harbaugh. That's what you told me. Nope. I told, I, yeah, Spade. How can you not? He, I heard during the game, he is one in fourteen versus teams ranked in the top ten. That's horrible. That's horrible. He got. You listen. I don't want to say he gotta go, but he gotta go. He got to go. He got to go, bro. I'm going to give you some stats. Here's his. This is Michigan under Jim Harbaugh. 0-4 against Ohio State. That's a big one. Okay. 1-9 versus top 10 opponents. 0-7 against an underdog. Oh, God. 1-6 on the road against ranked opponents. And... Five losses by at least 21 points, including three of their last five games. Spade, how can you, you say those saying, stats? Spade, how, yes. How, go ahead. How can you say those how, stats and yes. say he's not going to get fired? 
Right? That's what you're about to ask me. That's right? what I'm about to ask you, bro. Because he got to Michigan in 2015, where he went 10 and 3. Then the next year in 2016, he went 10 and 3. Okay. 2017, woo, he went 8 and 5. Okay. That's bad. Terrible. Well, it ain't great. I mean, you get a bowl, you're going to be you going to be in the <laughs> the strong the strong arm sports bowl. But go ahead. I mean, no, they went to the Outback Bowl. Well, they lost. Okay, go ahead. 2018, 10 and 3. Okay. So, bro, in his time at Michigan, he's 40 and 15. Okay. But you beating up on Army. And 10. You beating up on Army and Navy. Air Force. And I, and I, I get that. Stanford. I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. He's been there for four seasons. They've had four bowl appearances, and he's one in three in those bowl appearances. They won the Citrus Bowl, lost the Orange Bowl, lost the Outback Bowl. You, you got the, the teams they played? Um, if you don't, it's okay. No, 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 no it's okay. It's okay. I don't. What I want to say is this. Michigan wants better, for sure. If nothing else, they want to beat Ohio State. They, they want to beat... I got his conference record. 6-2, and 7-2, and 5-4, and 8-1 and one in the conference last season. They can't fire you for going 8-1 and one in the conference. Do you know how who, much worse it could get who they before lost it to? gets better? Who they lost to? Ohio State. They can fire you for keep losing to Ohio State. That supposed to be the... Yo... Michigan eight can and go one, one in the conference. And ten. They can you go can't one fire and ten. coach for going eight and one in the conference. Okay, you can't. Okay, you can't. Man. Okay, because it's too risky for you to get somebody who can do worse than eight and one, worse than seven and two, worse than six and two. And like I said, twenty seventeen was a bad year for them. Eight and five total, five and four in the conference. They finished fourth can't in the East. They shooting lost to the Bell. Jesus, I'm just I, when you look at them, forty and fifteen in four years, bro. You a Florida State fan? I'm a damn Miami fan. We would love to go eight and one. I would love to go eight and one in my damn conference. I would love ten and three to be our record last year. It could be way worse. So although he is not, he's not reaching. He's not hitting expectations, right? He ain't delivered on what they expect. But bro, if that's bad, I'll, I'll sign I don't you know, up. I don't know if he gets fired. Yeah, sign me up, bro. I, listen, man, I, it's tough. It's, it's tough for first those, in the conference last season, bro. It's tough having those records versus ranked opponents, babe. I mean, you it beating is. up on Illinois. You, yeah, you, you, yeah, you winning in your division. You playing teams like Illinois. Come on, You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And, and the stats Rutgers, that I gave you they blew Rutgers. They, they blew the doors off Rutgers. You damn right. The stats that I gave you beforehand means that they beating the teams they supposed to beat and they losing to the teams that they supposed to lose to. Now I know that's not you want to beat some of the teams you're not supposed to beat, but technically, they beating the teams they supposed to beat and they losing to the teams they supposed to lose to. And and that's I don't know if he gets fired for that. Okay. I don't know if he gets fired. For okay. That. I, I, I want our listeners to listen, the, weigh in on this one. These coaches make a lot of money, Spade. Absolutely. I, I, I'm being hard on these coaches this year. Yeah. And I just said when I was talking about Taggart every week since college football has started. <laughs> listen, it's time for teams nah, you to get off no this. Taggart oh, before the shit started. You but that's a fact. Like that's a fact. But it's time for teams to get off this. Oh, he's an alumni here. Let's hire that guy. It's time to get off that shit and start. Just hire the best guy for the job, bro. Yeah, now somebody may ask. What's the alternative? I don't know. It got to be some some fresh young. Hey, get T. Martin a shot. T. Martin been uh, been a coordinator lighting folks up. T. Martin been lighting folks up. Tennessee, look, T. T. Martin played for Tennessee. I wouldn't be listen. Tennessee out here getting that work. They ain't called T. Martin. Shit. T. Martin been lighting folks up, coordinating shit. Get T. Martin a job. Or this an interview. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, I think they interviewed T. Okay, maybe they did. Didn't get the job. I think they did. Didn't get the job, and they look terrible. Facts. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying, man. And listen, and cr it's crazy because I, I like Harbaugh. I like Harbaugh as a coach. I just think you can't come in there swinging a big stick. Like if we're gonna do anything, we're gonna beat Ohio State, man. Y'all out here getting that work. Y'all just got. Y'all just got gashed, and y'all should have lost last week to the Army. 
Yeah. I don't know. You can't you can't have those type of numbers. And like you said, Spade, like you look at the overall record, forty four and forty four and um fifteen. I guess you can't complain, but yo, this I mean, and I ain't even no Michigan fan, but you just can't I mean, y'all ain't beating nobody. Y'all ain't beating nobody. They beat Wisconsin last year. They just got they just got routed by Wisconsin today. Routed. Spade, what we think? Yo, if I'm not mistaken, Phils, Phils just threw another five, six touchdowns today. What do we think will happen oh, when they play man. Ohio State? Dots, 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 yeah, dots, they all, dots. They're they going to get body. They're going to get body. So, yeah, I'm in, hey, I don't, see, I'm going to tell you something I, I learned about people that watch our show and people that tweet us when our team losing, Spade. When our team losing, they be all in the midst. Oh, Spade, what about the Dolphins? Yeah, they oh, the Paris, out. FSU. With Hey, I know, I know we've been, been in numerous, it's been numerous times people was like, yo, Big Blue, Michigan, blah, blah. I don't hear no Michigan fans. Where Michigan at? Where Michigan at? So I already know there's some Michigan fans that watch our show and stuff. They've been real quiet. But if you're a Michigan fan, state Big Blue in the chat and let us know how Big you Blue. guys feel about Harbaugh. Because I'm looking over there like, yo, it's, it's not looking hey. good to me. Go ahead, Spade. And let us know what y'all think about Jim McMahon since he was clearly <laughs> yeah, on McMahon. my mind. Yeah, him too. I don't know Shout why I him. was talking about Jim McMahon. Get well soon, Jim McMahon. That's my guy. Wait, get well? What's wrong with Jim? Yeah, he got that, uh, you know, he got that stuff with, uh, you know, playing football like like dementia. He got dementia. Dementia. It's called. Oh. Yeah. I know I saw a special where he was talking about, uh, you know, he, he, he medicates. Yeah, he was trying to get away from opioids. Jim McMahon is probably he's easily top five of my all time favorite quarterback to watch play. Love watching that dude play. My God, bro! Yeah, I didn't even know he was he was suffering with that, man. All right, Spade, you saying? That made me sad. You saying uh, Harbaugh keeps his job, and you may be right. After hearing those, his overall record, he probably gonna keep his job because then you ask what's the alternative, and I don't have an answer. But. It's not, it's not my job to have an answer for them. They're supposed to do their due diligence and figure out who's the answer. But anyway. That's fair. That's fair, too. But anyway, you know, listen, I'm, I'm going to be hard on college coaches all year this season. Spade, Manny Diaz on deck. Okay? He on deck. You might well take, take that shit on over there somewhere. We good, fam. Nah. Ain't nothing wrong Manny. with Manny. Okay. Okay. Manny, Manny Diaz Manny. on deck. He next. <laughs> okay. Hey, Spade, I'm ready to move on and get to the Pick'em game. You ready with that? You, you, you. I am. You up 2-1. Uh, and shout out to the people. I? Shout out to the people in the chat that's keeping score. Shout out to y'all because then Spade ain't going to be able to cheat your boy. So shout out to y'all. I, I don't, First I, of all, I, I let me say this. I get the I'm not going to have to. Huh? I get the feeling I'm not going to have to cheat. Whatever. Not this year. Not this year. But it's crazy because that Philly game was crazy. That Philly game was crazy. I didn't see a problem. I saw what Julio get loose. I mean, they said Julio ran 20 miles per hour. Like none of that wouldn't have happened if what? If Sanu didn't make the block. You know what Sanu from? Rutgers. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. But Spade, I already know you over there making a face or some shit, doing some nonsense. It's I don't, I don't make faces, bro. I, don't, I just. Okay. Spade, I got a good pick game for us this week. Yeah. Um, I got the Baltimore Ravens. They traveling to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And we know that that was one of the, one of the best games. That was one of the best games last year. Lamar had a chance down at the wire, and the Kansas City Chiefs was able to pull it out. Spade, Kansas uh, Ravens versus the Chiefs. That's the pick'em game. Who do you have, and why? I mean, I got, the I got Kansas City, I, bro. I, I got the Chiefs too, and that's not going to really? happen. Really? Yeah, of course. Spade, who do you have? Lamar. Dolphins or Cowboys? I mean, is that the pick em game? No, no, no. No, no, no. All right, well, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about Spade, it. Spade, I'm, I'm my just business, asking bro. a question because you, you begged me to not to pick the business, Dolphins and the bro. Cowboys as the pick em game. You begged me. What? He was, like, he was like, bro, please don't pick the Dolphins Cowboy game as the pick em game because we already know they about to, it's about to be a bloodbath out there. So, first of all, my voice ain't sounding that's that how you soft sound when you was, was one. You, Big bass over here. You hear this? That's you how you were saying that when you was talking boom, about boom, your Dolphins. Boom. Like you get real, you get real timid when you talk about your Dolphins. Boom, boom, real boom, timid. Boom, 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 boom
Please, that ain't please, never sounded like that. Please, sir. <laughs> bro, give me the Chiefs, bro. Give me okay. the Chiefs. I'm, as I'm phenomenal as Lamar Jackson has been so been far great, this man. season, uh, Pat Mahomes has been equally phenomenal, and he's got better weapons around him. So, I mean, it's simple addition. You take two really good quarterbacks, you start looking at the weapons around him, give me Pat Mahomes. Easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Chiefs as well. And um, I think I, I think it's going to be a good game, though. The spread is kind of, you know, around six-ish, six-and-a-half-ish. I don't, I don't think the Ravens get blown out, but I think the Chiefs do win. Same Z's. Okay. Same Z's. La Paris, it is the last and final segment of today's show. I love show. doing this show with you, man. I love doing got. this show with you. It's been a great show. Covered a lot of bro, things this show. I love doing the show with you too, bro. I do. You get on my nerves sometimes. But you're my man, 50 grand. Look, last segment of today's show is called a Strong on Performer of the Week. Yeah. It, it's an award. Most of y'all know, but somebody might, they might be listening for the first time. Let me explain. This is an award. It's a very prestigious award in podcast right. land. Given away to a male or female athlete who raised his or her level of play to ensure that their team got the victory. Tell you something about this show. We don't do participation awards, and we don't do almost, we, we don't do almost and maybes. We don't do that shit. You right. got to win, and then we celebrate you. We actually get this award away twice a week. It's 52 weeks in a year. That means we give away 104 of these shits, all right? right? Now, me, I'm really good. I scour the world, and I find the most deserving person, and I present it to him. LaParis, sometimes he do the right thing. A lot of times, he just give it to somebody that play for the teams he a fan of. That's, That's why true. I'm here to balance out that with professionalism. That's what I'm here for. LaParis, you on the hot seat. Who is your strong on performer of the week, and why? I'm giving my strong arm performer of the week to a guy, the man, the myth, the legend. A guy that nobody, listen, man. They, they ask a lot of questions about the young man. They say, yo, is he tall enough? Is he accurate? Can, can, he, can he throw the football through, through a cherry up? And they said, just, he said, just watch this. And I'm talking about Gardner Minshew. The Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback that got people saying, yo, Jacksonville Jacksonville might have found their quarterback of the future because he was out there dotting. He went 20 or 30 and for 204 yards, two TDs, and, a, and it was an ugly game. It was an ugly game. In a, in a 20 to 7 win over the Titans on Thursday. And for that performance, Gardner Miss you, you are my strong golf performer of the week. Gardner Minshew. The man, the myth, the legend. Spay, fun fact. Gardner Minshew is like Gardner Minshew the second, but his father isn't Gardner Minshew the first. Isn't that funny? The whole shit funny. The fact that you chose him for strong on performer of the week is funny. Gardner I'm Minshew, waiting on, bro. I'm, I'm waiting on you to type LOL at the end of all that. So I, I know show you love what love is due, bro. He earned it. He earned it. Let me tell you something. Pat Mahomes had a phenomenal week. Could have easily been strong on performer of the week. But I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, to get my award away, I want to go to Baltimore. And I want to get mine to a guy that they said it was too short. They said that he didn't throw it right. They said he couldn't throw it through a Cheerio. They said that he was a running back. They said that he should change positions. They said he never would make it in the league. And to my knowledge, the, the kid got one regular season loss since he's been in the league. Let me tell you. Week one, he got lucky. He caught the Dolphins. He fired them up. Week two, he had the Arizona Cardinals, and everybody was going to watch and see, you know, was it a fluke? Is he going to come out here and turn the ball over a lot? What is he going to do? Let me tell you what he did, all right? He was an efficient 24-37 through the air, 272 yards, over seven yards a pop, two TDs, no INTs, a QBR of 90, Mm. And a QB rating of 104.8. And I ain't through. That's what he did through the air. On the ground, he had 16 carries for 120. Mm. Seven and a half a pop. Fam, this guy might be the most electrifying player at the QB spot since Mike Vick, bro. Wow. And it's I don't want to put that pressure on him. I don't want to put that pressure on him. I just <laughs> want him to be a great Lamar Jackson. But this type of... I, I ain't seen it. And and I just got through raving about the rookie season that RG3 had. But the way this kid is playing, bro, tune in. This is 
This is history in the making. You want to see this shit when it's happening. You don't want to be that guy that everybody talking about this dude in five years and you late to the party. Tune in. <laughs> For that performance, Lamar, you are my strong arm performer of the week, bro. Good That's stuff. a great pick. And Spade, I'm going to do it something. Is. That's what I do. I'm president and we never did on this show before. Oh, Lord. I'm picking my strong arm performer of the week for next year, and I'm giving it to Zeke Elliott because he's going to tote that thing against them damn Dolphins. Zeke Elliott. You meant for, next week. That's what I said. You said next year, but I know what you meant. Yeah, next week. Next week. I, but I meant next <laughs> Listen, I meant next week. And for that performance, Zeke Elliott, you are my strong arm performer of the week, Zeke Elliott, because of the performance Bro, he must have put on the damn Dolphins. Bro, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard before in my life. You know bro, Rose is starring, right? Zeke about to tote that thing against y'all. It's going to get ugly, bro. It's going to be a bloodbath. Spade. Ain't nobody bro. worried about Ezekiel. Okay. He better be. That's we the really problem. Not. We really not worried about no Ezekiel. Okay. He about to tote that thing, bro. All right. Bro, who's going to play in sure Minka uh, yeah, who you think gonna play in Minka spot in them six holes we got on the defense? I mean, y'all got <laughs> six safeties. Well, that's facts. Safe. Rashad Jones out. Rashad Jones stay hurt now. Rashad Jones is out. Oh, yeah, no, y'all y'all gonna put a linebacker there or something? Yeah, that's how y'all do. Y'all put y'all play. Raekwon McMillan. I'm <laughs> calling it now. Raekwon McMillan gonna lay a hit on Zeke so hard, man. Come Zeke on, gonna come this. dancing through that damn hole and. The, Wow! Shit gonna oh, go over everywhere. Over 20 yard the, the for star. Zeke. Hold on, I'm still painting the picture. The star gonna fall off Zeke's helmet. He gonna fall on his back. He gonna roll around and agonize and pain. Raekwon gonna stand over that fool and say, ain't no cereal around here. Yo, over under 20 yards rushing for Zeke. Under, bro. Don't disrespect us. Why like you saying so low? Under, bro. Under. Under. Oh, yeah, Don't disrespect yeah, us like that, bro. Okay. Who you think he is? Jay Ajayi? You think he giving folks over 200? Jay you think he's Jay Ajayi? No more. Well, that's because he shouldn't have left Miami. That's what happened when they leave Miami. They think they be good. No, we make them good. And you know what? You know what? While I'm oh. in my bag, King and Drake on the block too. If anybody want King and Drake, call my phone. I'll make you a deal for him. He can pack his shit and get out of here too. Huh? The only Drake we like is Aubrey. That's the only Drake we like. You, you finish or you done? Bro, I'm just saying. We we rebuilding some shit down here. You can get with it, or I can get on the phone and get Man, you shipped probably, the hell out. We could probably be part owners of them for like a cool, what, 5K? First of all, we can't be shit, because I don't want you near my my organization, my friend. Then you don't want to win. Because I, I build that shit up down there. Because y'all clearly don't I know see, what y'all doing. I, I see how well you've been doing with the Cowboys. Yeah, we eat. We uh -huh. eat. Anyway, uh -huh. listen, man. See, he want to pop shit about the Cowboys. Like, we ain't about to, like, we ain't on our way to Miami right now. That's what I want. Okay. Zeke, Zeke might get 250 on them boys. Listen, man. He might want... show up weighing 250. That's that about it. it. Stop it. He might tip the scales at 250. We want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Strong Arm Sports. Y'all already know, man. We appreciate you guys' continued support, man. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're a regular here, hit the like button. It takes two seconds. Also, a little bell up there. You can click that bell. Send a notification to your mobile device that lets you know a new episode has been uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you don't want to see two dudes arguing in the box, it's okay. We got audio podcasts everywhere. SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, Spotify. We are everywhere. There's no reason why you guys should ever miss a show. We want to thank you guys for your continued support. Spade. Bro, what you, gonna, think the, what you Dolphins think the gonna score is going to be in that Dolphin game? What, what, what score? Give me a score prediction before we get out of here. 40 to 10. Oh, that's okay. what you was aiming for, right? I'm thinking something like 35, 14, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all not scoring 35 points on this. Y'all real, yeah. real oh. gadgety, and y'all got... Y'all real gadgety, so I can see some gadget shit happen, happening. Rosen going straight throw. All right, watch. Okay. Watch. We about hey, to turn Rosen loose. Damn, they ain't going. They ain't going. They going to see this shit afterwards. But it's cool. Leave your score predictions for the Bears game Monday night. The Bears got a game Monday night. Leave your score prediction for the Monday night game in the comment section down below. That's gonna be fun. 
Listen, man, we want to thank y'all for your continued support, man. We'll see you guys next episode. We out. Peace.